Everyone knows we have lungs, a beating heart, and a digestive system, but most folks are amazed when they see the inner life of speech. Today, with the help of magnetic resonance imaging, I'm going to introduce you to what goes on inside you when you speak. The video we'll be looking at is from SPAN at the University of Southern California. I've put the link to all their videos below. First, let's just watch 20 seconds. The sound quality is a bit weird to filter out the noise of the MRI scanner, but there's nothing weird about this guy's speech. Everything you see now happens inside you every time you talk. How do I like LA? Uh, I like LA quite a bit, I think. Everyone always asks you that, actually. Uh, it's the one city, I think, that I've ever lived in where everyone asks you if you like it or not. But uh, what I always tell people is that everyone hates LA for six months uh, or a year, and then they kind of tolerate it for another year, and then after that they love it. Okay, what I'm going to do is break this down into the four gateways of speech. When you speak, the muscles inside move your jaw and lips so that your mouth alternates between being more open and more closed. It tends to be more open for vowels and more closed for consonants. Watch how the lips close the mouth gateway completely for this B in but. But, but, but. The mouth can also be obstructed by putting your bottom lip on your teeth, like in this V in everyone. Everyone, every, every, every. Everyone. The opening and closing of the mouth is such a basic pattern that if that's all we see, we can easily suspend disbelief and interpret it as speaking. Dreams are how we figure out where we want to go. Life is how we get there. As you start to speak, muscles in your throat bring your larynx or voice box into play at the top of your windpipe. How do I like LA? You speak for a few seconds, then inhale quickly then speak again for a few seconds, then inhale again, and so on. So speech is a modified way of exhaling. Inside the larynx, voice is made by the vocal cords or vocal folds vibrating. Here's a photo of my vocal folds. If you're squeamish, look away now. Looking down my throat from above, here are my vocal folds, almost closing the gateway to the lungs below. And this is a stroboscopic video, not me that shows in slow motion how the folds vibrate when they make voiced speech. You may not have noticed the nose much in the video, but it's vital to control whether or not your breath can escape through your nose. That means another gateway, and it's here at the back. The soft palate is the squishy rear part of the roof of your mouth that ends in the dangly uvula. The photos I showed you before of my vocal folds were taken by passing a fiber optic camera up my nostril, through my nasal cavity, and down behind my soft palate. When you're just breathing, your soft palate hangs down, so the breath can get behind it and go in and out through the nasal cavity. Now, as soon as you're about to speak, the soft palate lifts up against the back of the throat and blocks off the nose. But, uh, what I always tell people... It mainly stays there while you're speaking, but drops down briefly for nasal speech sounds. Let's look at the words six months, where the soft palate drops down just for the nasal portion, mun. Six months. Six months. Six months. If you actually want to feel this gateway, you can try snickering loudly through your nose. <coughs> That's air squeezing through the soft palate gateway. Or try this. Blow through your lips as if you were blowing out birthday candles. Next, just breathe out through your nose. Now, take a deep breath and try quickly switching from the blowing to the nose breathing. Inside at the back, you should be able to feel the soft palate dropping to allow air out through your nose. Of course, the star of the show is your tongue. And it's not just the part that you can push outside. The ways in which the tongue acts as a gateway are complex. 
In fact, the tongue in action looks like an entire animal in its own right. The forward part is like the head of this badger. It can move around, and the tip can be lifted up to touch your teeth and palate. Now the rear part can be relatively low and flat, or bunched up towards the roof of your mouth, like this badger arching its back. This big rear part may be out of sight and out of mind, but it's crucial for sounds like y as in yes, and k and g as in cargo, and for vowels. So let's put everything together and look at how you say the word think. For this word, your mouth is going to be somewhat open throughout. First, you raise the tip of your tongue, like the snout of the badger, to touch your teeth. Also, the th sound th is voiceless, so your larynx gateway briefly opens up a bit. Then, while your tongue tip retreats from your teeth, your tongue body starts to bunch like the badger's back for the i vowel. Next, it arches right up to touch the roof of your mouth, and simultaneously, your soft palate lowers for the ng sound. For the K, your soft palate has to shut this gateway, like so. Then your tongue gateway is opened rapidly, making the explosive sound K. This sound is also voiceless and happens to be at the end of a phrase, so the speaker now takes a breath. And now here's the whole word in real time. Think, 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 think. On average, we produce several words every second. That speaker averages between three and four. We can only perform this miracle because we spent years learning to do it in our early lives, even though we don't remember any of that now. Look right here. So learning to speak a different way, changing your accent, learning to pronounce a foreign language well, is something that generally takes commitment and practice, like skateboarding, or learning a musical instrument. The key thing is to enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe, and please share it with anyone who might find it interesting. Until next time, take care.